Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there, join the militia. Syracuse caps off the regular season with a 72-63 win over Wake Forest to stop the bleeding from the last four games. Jesse Edwards... With the game of his career, he finished the season average in a double-double with over 14 points a game and 10 rebounds. Uh, you'll hear from us. We'll hear from you in fan feedback. And Syracuse takes on Wake Forest again this Wednesday at noon. We'll give you our thoughts on all that as we head into the ACC tournament this week. Uh, if you haven't already downloaded the Spotify Live app, go ahead and do so. It's available in your iOS or Android stores for free. All you need is a username, email address, and a password. Sign up. Follow us at Cuse Militia. Sign up for notifications when we go live. You can get in the room there and listen or request to speak. We can get you on. Also, quickly, um, the ratings and reviews really help us out, I feel like, on, on, on Apple. And uh, not for anything, if you enjoy the show and you do listen on uh, Apple device, whether you listen on Apple Podcasts or anything else, you can go into Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review and rating. We would really appreciate that. Um, and I think that's it. I think. The montage, yeah, the montage is a little long, but I cut out the, the, the beginning, the opening thoughts. Because the, the, for whatever reason, the past few montages have been like 15, 18 minutes long. And... Uh, I did the best I could with it, but there's kind of a lot there and some things to talk about. Syracuse, um, giving us a, 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 like I said in the last show, right, right when I'm about to just throw my arms up and give up, they bring me back into it. And there's a little bit to say about the game. And uh, I think some more to say about other things surrounding it. And we'll talk about the you know, going into the ACC tournament here. So, uh, with all of that said, let's hear what Coach had to say following the win. I came back here, promised six guys I'd be back to coach. Um, never thought of anything else. And, uh, you know, you can't tell six people you're going to coach them and not coach them. So, there was never an issue, never an option not to. Um, and uh, I'm glad that, that we've worked through this. Uh, I think you have to understand that I think in a normal year in before the – we lost five games to people that brought in three to four players, veteran players. We went 0-5 against those people. And without the transfer portal, I think, you know, we beat these teams. But that's reality today. And you have to, looking forward, you have to see who's coming back, and then you have to be in the transfer portal um, to be successful. I think the weekend sums up with, we did this at the end, not a fan left. Not a fan left the building. Um, They stayed right to the end. They'd still stay if we were out there. Um, It speaks... I think what were we Pete, just third in the fourth in the country, or well, we're only third in the country, in, in, yeah, uh, huh? We moved up third. Yeah, we're only third. I, you know, that's too bad. When we moved into the dome, I was you know, definitely not in favor, and I think everybody in Syracuse thought, well, "How's this going to work?" You know, we're getting nine thousand a game. It's a city of two hundred thousand people, four hundred in the camp, whatever. How are you going to get? I, I said, well, maybe we can get 15000 you know, build to that, something like that. But for the 30-plus years we've been in here, we've averaged over 20, 22000 probably a year. And I don't – to me, that's the biggest surprise in college athletics that I've seen. 
that we've been able to do that with no parking, tough winters, tough to get here. And I remember when Georgetown game was on TV and it was just unbelievably snowing and there were 31,000 people here. I remember walking out and looking around and saying, "How this, this isn't even possible. You can't even dream this stuff. And I think we've had 30,000, how many times, Pete? I think it's over 100, but we'll take 90. <laughs> and to me, that's unbelievable. Speaks to our fans. And the fans here, they're not the one calling the radio show. Not one fan that was here tonight calls any radio show. The people that call the radio shows do not come to games. They don't have season tickets. The only way they come is if somebody gives them a ticket. This reflects what our fan base thinks of our program. We had not a great season about what people thought, probably, that predict things like this. I don't. And what was here, what were here today? 24,500 people. And, and you think that people are upset with our program? Yeah, they're upset, the ones sitting home calling. That's who's upset. Do I want to do better? Yeah, and yeah, we want to do better. But the f people that show up tell you whether you have support or not. Not who calls on the radio. The same 22 people call. You had Jesse and Joe maybe play their last game here in the Dome. Maybe. What they, like I said. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Quadir played, I think, 12 minutes in the first half. I'm, I, about I'm, I'm trying to get Quadir's. I just can't explain it. He is a monster in practice, and he's a, what's the opposite of monster? I don't know. He's the opposite. And he just doesn't do the things in the games that he doesn't win. He, he scored 20 straight points in practice the other day against the first group, 20. And here he's tried to shoot jump shots or he's standing. In practice, he goes and rebounds and he gets, you know, he's so much better than he's shown. Um, but, you know, he, it's, he does a lot of things that you don't translate to college basketball, but he does some things that will. It, it's just time. He needs time. Coach, with the 2003 team coming back and you were talking about the fan support over the years and what the program became, does this give you more, like, cause you to reflect a little bit more on what this program has become? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't do a lot of that. I do it today because those guys are back and because Jerry and Hakeem's number was retired, that you have to reflect on that. Um, I, I just love those guys. They just, they're great people. They really are unbelievable people. Players today aren't like that anymore, not even close. But that's the way life is. There's, there's no Roosevelt Bowie and Lewis Orr's anymore either. Those guys are gone. We got guys that want to score and points and look at the box score. All right, like I was saying, um, what Coach really had to say in his opening statements at the beginning was um, just obvious, the obvious. Um, defense was the difference. Um, they just obviously they, the the zone was way more active. Um, it was energetic. The effort was there. Um, you know they got to shooters way better. They closed out ex extremely quick a couple different times. I saw Chris Bell just freaking take leaps to a shooter. Um, and by the way, Bell started obviously. You all know that. Mm -hmm. So I guess that drama is hopefully over with. And, and ironically enough, they played a little bit better. Um, I don't know if they had anything to do with it, but. That's just an observation. Uh, 13 out of the 16 turnovers that Syrac Syracuse created were steals. And, yeah. uh, I mean, Judah looked like a freaking DB out there. Uh, <laughs> the offense uh, was a little uh, – left a little to be desired, but when they had chances to make runs, they kind of faltered a little bit. But, you know, Jesse was just insane. Um, 27 points and 20 rebounds. Uh, I was just just cheering on that last rebound for so long uh, when he had 19 to get to get um, 20 and 20, which is 
you know, something I don't remember seeing anytime. I don't remember the last time we saw it for an SU player, but um, he did yeah. so. Uh, and he comes out as the hero of the day. Obviously, this team did get some motivation from from guys like Mello. And I think before the game, um, there was some some clips I saw him talking. And, and I think, you know, I think that stuff goes a long way, you know, to be able to just eliminate the negative thoughts and everything surrounding the past four games and you know to just the, the discouragement of of losing the way they've lost i mean i opened up the last show with some of the atrocious stats on the on the on the three pointers that were allowed in those four games and um you know to be able to hit the reset button with some of these guys from the championship team and and be surrounded with with some of that talent and some of these guys that are wise to everything and Maybe some one-on-ones, uh, you know, with with some of those guys talking about, hey, man, I remember having to be in these situations with Coach, too. You know, things like that. So who knows? But uh, I thought, you know, to come out and do what they did after what had happened to them before is um, – I was impressed. Other than being able to really extend the lead when they had the opportunities, which is unfortunate, I think – it goes back to what I was saying in the last show about defense and being able to keep the score a little bit moderately low. You know, I'll sacrifice some offense for more defense because I just feel like it just for our playing style it works better anyway. And um, yep. and and the defense was awesome. And you know, it's it's not the two three zone; it's how you play it. I mean, how many times have we talked about that? You know, right. um, it, there's aspects, I think, that have surpassed the 2-3 zone with just the way college basketball is played now. But still, uh, the effort was there and the energy was there. And um, I was proud of them yesterday for pulling that off, despite some sloppy play on offense. Yeah, and that's also a situation, too, where I try to put it in perspective because Wake Forest is still trying to figure stuff out from their injury uh, Carr didn't look that, you know, he followed out in 19 minutes and he looked banged up. He had a thing on his uh, wrist and he was limping around a little bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, Wake Forest was one of the better three-point shooting teams and obviously they're not in full strength. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where that defense, they showed up and they played a lot better. I mean, you saw that one block in the beginning with Jesse where that looked like almost – the closeout wasn't as good a block as the block from Hakeem, right? But the way that the Chris Bell out. went up or Benny Williams went up to close out and then the way that Jesse went over and blocked it, it almost looked like a very similar play. So and I know that they did um go to the you know, the night prior when they had the watch party, um where they rewatched the two thousand three national championship and they had Bayheim and all the players up on the stage and then they had a bunch of fans that came to it and stuff. Uh, those players, they went to that. You know, they got to watch that game. They got to see the game where they won the national championship. They got to see their coach, Jerry, hit six first round or first uh, half threes. You know, they got to see. Most of these kids weren't even alive. Right. So, you know, that's a situation where they got to see all that, you know. And I know that <clears throat> Mello even had a, um, you know, a message for them and, and said something off stage there at the, on stage at the end there. So. Um, I had a couple friends, a couple people that I knew that, that went to it. They got tickets for it and stuff like that to go to the event. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> I think that that had a little bit to do with that as well. And, you know, their back's against the walls. Um, senior day, they wanted to go out there. Uh, during the game, they showed actually a stat where the last time that someone had 20-plus points and 20 rebounds for Syracuse was Paul Harris. Okay. And he had something like 29 points and 23 rebounds or something. But it was also the six-overtime game against UConn. So oh, I got you. he all played right. a lot more minutes <laughs> than Jesse yeah, did to get all obviously. that, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely refreshing for them to see that. It was also refreshing to see that Georgia Tech beat Boston College before the game. So we knew that we were already going to be locked into, you know, the eight or the nine seed and um, the noon game on Wednesday. So we wouldn't be playing on Tuesday either. So, yeah, I mean. Like we said, they kind of brought me back in a little bit, but I still don't know how confident I am. I think it makes me a little bit more confident for the game against Wake Forest again come Wednesday. Um, I think we match up good against them, but nonetheless, I mean, we're going to have to go from there. So we'll see. To the montage, uh, you can't tell six people you're going to coach them and not coach them. We got through that. That's an odd statement. (laughs) 
I just the one thing it was just. A, I mean, what does that mean? Am I looking too much into this? I mean, you can't tell six people you're going to coach them and not coach them. We got through that. Okay, what does that mean? We got through it. No, I mean, I think that is it. Goes. Just a, is it? Is it a? Is it a off the cuff comment about how you know they just didn't go to the portal? Um, um a little bit, but I think also too it was. I think it kind of goes back to the naysayer, or you know, the people, the fans that um, that are saying that he should have retired last year and everything like that after he had such a bad year, and they thought he was going to retire after well, no his one, sons graduated. No, yeah, no one wants to retire after a bad year. I would have never expected that. Um, right. So anyway, um, I thought it was an interesting comment. I don't, we'll we'll see what happens this year. I don't. I put. I did put a poll out. And uh, I, there was a bunch of people that voted on it. Um, 463 is today. This was yesterday. Is today's Bayheim's last game in the Dome as head coach. And I uh, had yes, no, I hope so, I hope not. I hope not with the 8.9%. Yes, at 17.7%. I hope so, 29%. And uh, no, with 44.5%. So uh, just kind of getting the fans' thoughts there. Just to have some fun with it. We didn't do many polls this year. So, um, no, I thought that was and interesting. That's loaded but. question too, right? Because for those people that say no, I mean, are you saying that you don't want us to make the NIT? I mean, if we make the NIT, then that gives us an opportunity. I don't think they're thinking about games, that. Right. Yeah. I don't think okay. I'm thinking about that. I just that. you know, I'm throw a little caveat out there. Um, the uh, you know the transfer portal is obviously the way to go forward, and it's going to be a um, mixture of things for between between recruiting and and getting what you need. And you know I don't know what it looks like, but we only have one recruit for next year. And um, I thought it was interesting. Um, a couple things. Um, first of all, the uh, comment about. Um, Jesse and Joe coming back. He said, maybe, maybe, you know, who knows, um, which is interesting. I I hope they do. Whenever I hope they do, though, they don't. So we'll see what happens. Um, I thought it was uh, telling some of this stuff. You know, he gave a, t- a tiny bit of background on, on switching from Manly Fieldhouse to the Dome. And I wish I, I, I could be around back then to just observe and, and see that going from a 9,000 – uh, seat venue to you know th- thirty plus, yep. and um, you know you. Um, I've always always wanted Syracuse to have a separate basketball facility that held somewhere between eighteen and twenty two thousand, something like that. Something to be more intimate and small and designed for. You want to talk about Loud House? You can you can design a place now that if you want to design it for sound and noise, you can. And I think you pack that place with the most diehard of diehard fans, and you could you could really change you could change some things as far as the the attendance in Syracuse basketball goes. Um, I don't know if they'll ever do it. I doubt it. They just dumped all this money into the dome. But anyways, uh, the coach talking about hoping to get fifteen thousand. They've averaged around twenty two thousand or so for for eternity, and. Um, you know, able to do it despite all the, the BS. You know, you, you, we've all been down there, the, the parking, the, the, the lack of tailgating, you know. Um, there's no amenities. It's a kind of a mess. There's no designated area for people. And it's right in the middle of a freaking city. And um, <laughs> it's built up everywhere. And you're, you're hanging out in crappy parking lots. And you still pull that many in. That's pretty amazing. Uh, yep. The weather, uh, you know, 30,000 plus, 90 to 100 times. Um, you know, I think um, just just to give the fans the credit, I think they deserve. They they really did this year do a pretty good job. There was a couple games where I didn't think they were going to be pulling much out, and they came out in droves. And we all know what it's like going there on a weekday when it's crappy weather and and still just doing it instead of sitting home and watching the game, you know, on TV at, at seven o'clock at night when you got to work the next day. So a lot of credit to the, those people. I don't listen to the radio shows. I, I kind of make it a point not to listen to anything, at least before we do the podcast, but you know, I don't, 
really have time. I, I, but I did, I do want to, I do really do want to listen to some of these, some of these radio shows and listen to some of the fans because I don't, we don't know many of those types of fans. I mean, I'm personally, I know a couple, but they don't, it's not people that are in our, like our fan base that listen to this show or comment. There's the, the people who comment. I don't think listen to the show all the time. Some of these right. people. And I think that to coach's point is, is what he was saying. You know, of course there's people who aren't happy with the program though. You know, to me, to some extent, I'm not like thrilled. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm a pretty hardcore fan, uh, you, you know, and and I'm not thrilled, but you know, in coach's defense, I understand what he's saying because it is the same people that are going to call those shows. There's the same people that's going to call radio shows over and over again and complain. Yeah, and most of the time, you mostly hear the complaining because that's usually on a radio shows like that. That's what gets drawn in is the angry people. So, yeah. for coach. You know, he says he doesn't listen to any of that stuff. Obviously, he listens to the shows. But um, anyway, good on him. Um, Twenty four thousand five hundred people in the in the game yesterday, or yesterday evening, and um, it's good. You know, I just uh, I just wish, I wish, I wish. First of all, the, oh, here's what I was going to talk about in the beginning of the show too. I stream the sh- the game, uh, Masson. Is the station here that puts all those games on anything that's on yes that y'all can't get in Syracuse that I can get here is on MASN and the audio was terrible and I knew that the it was skipping for some reason the the picture was good and it was there was it, it flowed fine it didn't skip but the the audio was skipping and I could never get a really good grip of what the crowd sounded like but I I could tell at times that they were blowing the roof off the thing so yeah um credit to that i don't know what you watched it on but um my audio here was terrible mm, so i watched it on bailey sports oh, okay i got gotcha. you um anything to say about that the fans or anything like that joe i just thought I mean, it was interesting it's... because uh you know he um took the time to to dish some 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 things out about it and you know the fans stayed to the very end in which no, they I mean, should have, right? right? No, but I think he was right a little bit about that, right? Like, I mean, those fans that stayed aren't those fans that say those things and, and call into the radio shows and stuff like that, you I, know? Yeah, I understand that. I, I think that's <laughs> not fair. a bad night. Not a bad night. We're still, you know, way, way, way up there as far as, you know. Third in the country. Go look at some of these, go yeah. look at some of these gyms. Remember, I watched a little bit of the Fairleigh Dickinson game the other day because, uh, for some reason, the team, the other team that won in their conference, isn't eligible as far as the other semifinal. They're not eligible to win the champ, or they're not eligible to go into the NCAA um, tournament yet. Because when you make a change from Division Two to Division One, I, I think there's like a three-year kind of gap you need before you can actually like go to postseason play. And so Merrimack, they won uh, their semifinal, but they're not eligible. So Fairleigh Dickinson was playing, and that looked like. I mean, our high school gym looked bigger than the gym that they were playing in. So, um, you got to put stuff into perspective, you know. And even on a bad day, we're getting a lot, you know. Yeah. Twelve thousand looks pretty empty, you know. Fifteen thousand there's so many empty seats. in a football stadium, right? Yeah. I still think I wish we had a. I wish we had a like des- a Duke. designated place for yeah. Like I would yeah. get nine eleven thousand pit and let it be just yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we could do really good with eighteen thousand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a Eight, great number. Twenty. 20. Well, like he even said, he said that we've ninety to hundred times we've had over thirty thousand people. Yeah, that's pretty good. I know it's excellent. <laughs> um, so Quadir, I thought it was impressive. Uh, you know, Quadir shows a lot of. Um, promise and practice and it's only a matter of time before he brings that to the to the floor in a game and maybe it's the big lights maybe it's experience maybe it's a little bit of both but this kid's obviously talented i freaking love his attitude uh absolutely just i th- think he's just a freaking man he's just such a it's just get such positivity out of this guy you know what i'm saying and um, it's only a matter of time before we we see him progress. I really, 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 really hope he stays because yeah. um, his role will be extended. He play, he played some good minutes yesterday, man. Yeah, I mean, so. and he, I think he's going to. Uh, that's a player that I'm not worried about transferring. I think that he knows 
Um, the coaches, they talk, you know, good. He's obviously, like we talked about last podcast, he's gotten better. He knows what he needs to do. He doesn't care about what his role is. You know, he doesn't think about what I want to do. He says, what do I need to do to get in the game? What do I need to do to get playing time? And yeah. whatever the coaches say, that's fine. You know, Jim Baham talked about him killing it in practice. Well, if he's running the second team going against the first team, then his role in that is he's got to be the scorer. And I think that sometimes when he goes from that in practice to now I'm in there with the starters, I think that he does not assume the same role because that's like a practice role. Second team going against the first team, right? Oh, well, he takes us somewhat of a back seat to everything when he's out right. there with those guys. Right. So there could be a little bit of a, well, what do you guys want me to do? You know, right. I mean, when I'm in the second team in practice, I'm like the, the man that's shooting and making everything happen. But now that I'm with you guys, like, what do you need me to do? You know, I think there's just kind of that just figuring stuff out thing, you know? Yeah. Um, we finished up with uh, talking about, you know, the players and, and him kind of just giving the, the accolades to Hakeem Warwick and Jerry McNamara, just character you know, talking about their character and, and kind of letting you know what kind of guys these they are and and how it's the game's a little bit different today. You know, it's a little bit more of a selfish mentality. I think, you know, you talk about 20 years ago. So, you know, no no cell phones like we got now. Social media wasn't a thing. You didn't have all of these avenues to be able to highlight yourself and put your, you know, do all of these extra things that they have now. And it's, it's kind of about, and he wasn't blanketing. It sounded like he was blanketing, but we, I think we we don't need to pick it apart. And um, you can kind of tell where he's going with it. There are some guys who just want to see their name in, in, in highlighted in a box score rather than going out there and playing a team sport because it's the the game has changed and you can you can advance into money so easily now that you know yeah. it's just. Every, it's it's a, just it a little bit different, yeah. And it's all it is. I mean, you look at it, the sports, these profiles, everything, these people for NIL, they have these these apps and stuff where you basically go in yeah. and you are throwing yourself out there. You yeah. know what I mean, you're making a brand for yourself in eighth grade, mm-hmm. seventh, eighth, ninth grade, all the way through. Yeah. You know? It's way different. And, and you know, I thought the NIL would kind of tamp some of that stuff down, you know, being able to make some money in college and not be so impatient to to advance into you know maybe whether it be the g league or overseas or obviously the nba but you know i don't know i guess we'll see this is the first real well it is the first the first full year of this and in um you know we'll just have to see how if, if any advances in money during the college season will will keep guys a little bit more patient I mean, I think so. I hope Especially, so. Especially, I think there's going to be a situation where, uh, you know, people don't get paid out. They say they're going to pay, you know, I'll pay you to do, you know, I'll pay you this to come to the school. But then when they're not producing, all of a sudden, you know, they don't get that money, right? I mean, and that's just really what it is. I like mean, it contingencies came, it and contracts? I mean, these yeah. kids, are, yeah. Back then, back then when they're talking about what he's talking about, these players had to come in, they had to prove themselves in for playing time. And now you're talking about kids are, well, how much money are you going to give me to come? Yeah. If you already are talking, how much money are you going to give me to come here? Then do you really think that person's not going to expect to play? Oh, I mean, obviously, if you, and especially they're they're paying them to play, basically. So you want to get your money's worth too. So but what if he can't? If he can't, then I guess he's going to be entering the he portal doesn't. because he's going to get his minutes cuts, right? And and I guess if, he doesn't get all the money. Right, but what if he doesn't work hard enough to get to that point to earn his role, and then the next thing you know, you don't get paid. Like, I mean, that's just really what it is. I mean, just because you're getting paid now, all of a sudden you think that, well, they're paying me to come here. So I don't got to work that hard because they're going to keep, you know, if they want to keep me, they're going to play me. Like, that's not going to equate into championship basketball. Yeah, unfortunately. So anyways, uh, a good game for Syracuse. Well, I have not dabbled in any of the fan feedback yet. I don't really know what it looks like. I know it wasn't heavy. Um, but we'll we'll kind of run through some of it. So, you know, last episode we didn't have much because I didn't ask for much. But we will do that now. It's time to hear from you. It's time to hear from you, the loud mouths from the loud house. All right, you guys know what to do at the end of every game. We ask for your thoughts on said game. Go ahead, leave them there. We talk about them here. Okay. 
Let's um, let's see, let's see what we got. Oh, you got those. a W. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's start with Facebook. Um, James. Leave the talking heads disappointed. Some local media were ready to pounce. Jesse Edwards was very impressive. I like the Edwards Bell Brown front court. Uh, I this is this is one reason why I would like to listen to local media more uh, because that's Otto. I say I have one cat in here last time. I got the other one in here this time. I have no clue how it got in here. I cleared the area. I cleared the area. But uh, this is one reason I want to listen to local media because I don't know who, what media or who they're talking about. Do you, Joe? <laughs> you I mean, have to no. speculate. I, mean, I just know that there's a lot of – so there's the, you know, the ESPN channel, and I know that there's some local media blocks in the afternoon there. So um, every week they have uh, daily – Everybody's you know, got on, a slot. Specific, yeah, everyone's got a slot. All the all the coaches from you know Alan Griffin, Red Autry, Jerry McNamara, and then coach has a slot on top of that as well. Then coach has got the thing with Matt Park where he and Carabas. Yeah, so um, I think that there's a lot of that. Um, although I doubt that the people that are calling in and Carabas live when he's there is probably not the fans he's talking about. You know, I think it's during the day in the afternoon on those local those local radio shows so right. um let's see uh brian hope we get to play more than one game next week yes and we'll talk about that here in a minute hold i gotta get this cat out of here hold on yeah i mean look that's Otto, look, Otto the cat he's happy we won he yeah. wants to, he wants to chime in he you know? wants but to get outside same time. <laughs> he wants to go celebrate hold on celebrate the win yeah exactly no, they are uh, absolutely right, Luke Orangeman. Confidence was key. We had confidence on defense. Did a great job. All right, we're, for all, the most we're part. all clear. Yep. If our defense stays that aggressive, there's no reason to believe we can win four in a row in a sorry, win four in a row this week. I think staying confident and aggressive for young guys is hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw it. I mean, Duke, Duke kind of was. They had confidence, and then it takes one game and kind of bled into some other games and. But now, yeah, look, that's a reset. It's a reset button going into the ACC tournament, you know? So um, I'm right there with you. There was confidence there. I think sitting there watching the national championship game with the former Syracuse players, with their coach Jerry, with their coach Bayham, I think, I think they got to see more of a lightheartedness and a different type of coach that they probably haven't seen or don't, don't normally see. Um, so, you know, that and with having the messages and everything like that from some of the players uh, – I think that it gave a little bit of extra pep in their step for sure. So, yeah, I think so. I think it. I think it probably it probably eased some of the discouragement. I kind of like I was saying earlier, but I think, um, I think it definitely played a part in the way those get, the effort that those guys displayed yesterday. Oh. I mean, there was a night and day on the on just the 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 speed and the awareness and how active the the um how active Judah Mintz was. I mean he I mean, yeah. dude did you they that one he caught looked like looked like a <laughs> DB out on the yep. field, bro. I mean that that was amazing. Just playing both, two guys and he passed it to the wrong guy. Yeah, he did. He did it like he three times. He missed he one. When Jesse had five steals, Judah had three and Malik had three. Malik was getting his hands in there too. Uh, Chris Bell running around, diving on the floor. Um, I mean, we haven't seen him. How? You know. By the way, how how many times can Judah Mintz get fouled in a game and not be fouled in the game? I mean, I'm just curious. You can say the same thing about Joe. Joe got fouled a couple times too. But yeah, Judah. Judah yesterday was getting is hammered so fast that sometimes he looks out of control, and he's not. Well, he was earlier in the year, but you know, sometimes he looks out of control and then he finishes a layup with his left hand. Right. I mean. That was amazing. It falls yeah, and hits it the beautiful. ground right in front of Mello. Yeah. Like, I mean, just just great plays overall. And you could see the, the the intensity and the confidence. And right, like I said, your season's not over. I mean, no, no, gets, no, no, no. Everyone gets a not. reset button going into that, that conference tournament, you know. So at some point, you know, you either give up on the season or you say, hey, guys, like, we still got a shot. Let's change this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. 
plus, you know, senior senior night and all that stuff. And Jesse wanted to go out there and have a good game, and obviously he did. And Joe, you know, it's by the way. I mean, he was asked by Donna Detota about, "Have you ever seen a senior go out on senior day like that?" And he couldn't he couldn't think of one. I mean, I doubt no, there is one. That's probably the best performance. That's pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough to. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing. But then you're going to have those other fans that are like, where is this Jesse Edwards fan? I just think they just... can't do that every game. No, you, you can't do it every game. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a mindset. I mean, he was just in a zone. I mean, that's the zone <laughs> right there. Shit, you, shit, you could be in a good mindset and still not put up a, well, 20, a 20, yeah. 20 and 20. Well, that's what I was saying. He's, he was in the zone. I mean, it's all there was to it. The dude was... Uh, he was on it. Um, he was insane. So... Uh, let's see. Steve finally got a win. We are where? Where are the three shooters? No pickup, no picks to free up Joe onto the next. I didn't understand some of that. Um, the uh, one for seven from Joe surprised me a little bit. You know, Joe has a game like that, and we usually struggle. You know, we held the lead for <laughs> most of this game, and um, the other thing is, we, we two for fourteen or something like that, and we got it done without it. You know. They looked like a, it was, it was a more comfortable win than the score showed. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I can agree with that, but it still was a little bit too close. I mean, they got to a point where a couple shots and they were right back in the game. So, yeah, we could could a little bit could have been a little bit you know better with the ball. There were some bad passes, some errant passes, and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, we we definitely should have been able to beat them by by more than that. Um, let's see. I'm just glad Malik Brown came back, came back to, came, <laughs> you know, eight rebounds, or sorry, nine rebounds, eight points, two assists, three blocks, or one block and three steals. 32 minutes, so. Malik's back at it again. Yeah, I mean, he looked good. I'm just looking for, I'm sorry, I'm getting on Twitter here. I just switched gears. Um, no Twitter, uh-oh. No, I was. I don't. I don't think there was anything too crazy on here. At Syracuse Mama forty four, great energy on defense. Rinse and repeat on Wednesday. Go orange. Uh, at Saltine Warrior four, gives us a reason to watch the ACC tourney. Great job, especially by Brown and Jesse tonight. Glad they got it done for Jerry and company. Anything can happen in Greensboro with momentum. So, like you're saying, you know. Um, it starts over, but it's good to start with some momentum. It's one thing to go in there on a five-game losing streak than it is to snap a four-game losing streak and do it like that. So, it is true, right? Um, Luke in the green room. This team can do more than shoot. We are a well-rebounded team. That was a good example. Yeah, they are, and they have a ton of talent too. Yeah, it yeah. just goes, I think, to the consistency aspect, and you know, not experience aspect, and mentally, mentally breaking down. Right, that's the experience, the experience aspect of it. <clears throat> you know, to what Luke uh, alluded alluded to earlier is, is that you know, younger kids, it's easier for them to to lose confidence, and that's I think we saw that in a couple different cases this year, and. uh you know, the, you can always look back and say what it could have, should, and what might have been. But I, I mean, to, to Luke's point in the green room, um, at one point, you know, we thought that we could pretty much compete with everybody but Duke, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, we had lost a lot of close games against good teams until, you know, there was a couple, but Duke really was just that is just the worst matchup we've had all year in. Just you could see it physically on the court. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, at T. Business, you guys see one decent game and seem to forget everything else that's happened this, this year, gone to shit. Not me. Sick of it. <laughs> Think at Todd D. Business was at the game? Uh, probably not. Uh, uh, let's see. At No Blanchard 44. <laughs> Needed that one. The defense actually had energy for once. Maybe Mello should go to all the games if they're going to play like that uh, when he's there. Yeah. Like we're saying, I mean, I think that that probably had 
a good chunk to do with it. I mean, I don't know all what was said, and I don't know what video coach was talking about in the press conference. Did you see it? I guess I'm going to have to go look at it. It's probably on the Syracuse YouTube page. I guess they put together something or whatever. There's a montage of something, but so no, no, no. So they um, somebody put together. It was almost like a little like movie slash like documentary of like that season and the 2003 you know oh, okay. um, team and everything like that. Uh, I believe it's the first time they played it. I want to say was the other night when they did the the, the um, game watch. Um, but I think it's going to be released to the public at some point. I just don't know if it is yet. At Drew Cuse, incredible effort today. Jesse made sure his last game in the Dome was a W. Man, I really hope it's not Jesse's last game. I really hope not. But, well, and that's the funny part about it, too. If you if you listen to Bayheim's press conference. Oh, he did say he alluded to something, didn't he? What, what Joe? Well, well, no, he was just talking about how he thinks that Jesse is like, he hasn't even scratched the surface of what yeah, he could exactly. be. Um, and, you know, to me... That screams that, you know, they're going to try to keep him. I don't see us getting a center. I mean, Peter Carey and Hema and Patterson, we just got off of, uh, you know, recruiting class for next year. And even the the transfer portal, I don't – if Jesse doesn't come back, we're not replacing him yeah. with somebody who's better. So No, yeah, absolutely. And I don't think he makes the NBA this year based off of what he's done this year. Um, so it really just depends on what he wants to do. I mean, does he want to move back home? Does he want to stay in the States? Is his dream the NBA? Or is he going to use the maximum amount of years that he has to play professional basketball and just go make money now over overseas? Um, that's a personal decision. What, um, what kind of NI, uh, NIL deal could uh, Jesse get, you think? I mean, you know, we're in the we're in the the business of doing business these days, too. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, if he wanted to use his transfer and go somewhere... <laughs> <laughs> and, and go and do that, then I'm sure that there's plenty of schools out there that are willing to give him more money than what he's making in, in Syracuse. I'll tell you that. It, that's, yeah, that's... It's just true. you leave what's comfortable for one more year. I don't know. Is he, well, yeah, that's just it. Exactly. Um, let's see. At Andrew, 537549... Two seven. Oh, it's his phone number. It sounds like a phone number, Andrew. You know you're not supposed to put that on here, right? Probably not. Uh, don't pick it apart. Don't overanalyze it. Enjoy it. Congratulations, men. Great win. Was a good win, by the way. It's a quad two win for what it's worth. I mean, uh, you know, it's better than losing a, you know, like we did against Georgia Tech, right? That was, the, like the, I said, the, like I said, that was that's been that was one of the most difficult games. I mean. I turn 40 next week, and that was one of the most difficult games I've ever watched. <laughs> hey, man. Age, age he made it to mindset. 40. Good job. It's just a mindset. I'm just saying that, you know, in my lifetime, that was one of the hardest games that I can remember watching. Yes, it was definitely. It wasn't even. It's, I mean, it's hard to even call it a game. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, it was at that point. I mean, when have you seen us down thirty at home against a team that's like in twelfth place in the conference, and, and with fifteen minutes to go, we just change and go to man. And then they're and then yeah. they're uh, also breaking school records on your court. <laughs> that's the worst, <laughs> by the way. It is the worst breaking school records on our court. It pisses me off. That's when I was like, okay, all right. Yeah, but to what Lou said, I mean, Georgia Tech hasn't had the greatest season, then they've had roles change and people get hurt and everything like that, and they came out and played confident against us, and that's what well, that's what confidence can do. Yeah. At SoCal SU, now we need to win the ACC tournament. All right? Which leads us to this. We just played Wake Forest, so we, we know what they are. We're 11-2 and two against them now, by the way. Never, they've We're, never beat us at the Dome. And we're on a two-game win streak, so it's pretty nice. Um, here's the thing, and I don't really – I'm sure they tried to stop Jesse, right? They they had to have tried. Once they saw what was going on – I they, mean, they, of course so, they tried. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is, is there any possible way Jesse could come out, if, if not for anything, just confident enough to go ahead and – just 
do something do similar again. again. I don't know if you can do it over again, but something impactful like that. I mean, he did quite a bit. I mean, we didn't even talk. What was it? Two blocks and five steals, too, with his 27 points and 20 rebounds. I mean, <laughs> holy day. Yeah. We didn't even mention the blocks and the steals yet. Oh, I mentioned the blocks or did the you? steals. But yeah, yeah, no, that's. I'd say that the answer is, is could he if Wake Forest decided to play the same exact way? Right. That's that what I'm saying. That coach an idiot. So, right. That's probably one of the worst. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was happy to and somebody back to back like that in four different, you know, the four day, like whatever gap, they're going to be able to go off that and they're going to, everything we did right, they're going to try to rectify and fix on their end, which means that we're obviously going to have to, um, you know, adapt to whatever they bring to the table in, in Greensboro. But when you look at that team, like I said, just a week and a half ago, they lost one of their better players, the best three point shooter, Monsanto, yeah. which would probably would have done pretty well last night. But, um. Yeah, I mean, you saw Carr get banged up. You saw that they really couldn't hang with Jesse um, or Judah, really. I mean, even Williamson couldn't really guard Joe Girard that well. So, I mean, it's – and then, like I said, you saw Carr got banged up and he fouled out. Um, Appleby did something, um, who they're saying or predicting to be the player of the year. He did something near the end of the game. I don't know. It looked like an ankle to me, but he was still hobbling a little bit at the end of the game. So, um, unfortunate for Wake Forest, um, losing, you know, getting these injuries and having to, it's tough a week and a half out, two weeks out of the ACC tournament to lose one of your best players. You have finally had your roles defined, um, and then trying to figure it all out again. So, um, not to say that they can't go and beat us but after watching that game obviously i have way more way more confidence about the game and i'm glad georgia tech used the momentum after beating us to go ahead and beat boston college and take that you know out of the realm of possibility uh, from the beginning we knew that before the start so, of the game, so well so if 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 we do get another game it's going to be against miami right yep okay this miami is one beat, i printed miami out beat pittsburgh yesterday it's glory as hell and then because Duke beat North Carolina, now we're on Duke's side. Yeah, well, now we're on right. Duke's side, too. That's the other thing. So they're going to have to play the winner of the winner of Florida State <laughs> and Georgia Tech, right? Pitt, most likely, yeah. it advances against Duke. And then, you know, it's on us to, to do something against Miami if we get back past Wake Forest again. So, yeah, it's not the best situation for us anyway. So... In no, fact, I mean, it it's really, probably doesn't get a whole lot worse having to play a team this close together and still try to to win a, a team that's it's different now. Like you said, they're still trying to figure it out, but you know it's still a pretty good team. I just I don't know, man. Having to do back to back games against I think if they beat us and we're going into this game, I'm feeling decent about it. Does that make sense? So you uh, know you know what bit, I mean. Yeah. So. I'm just saying, talking odds wise. So anyway, and then you get to play Miami, which I mean, we played Miami well. We probably should have won that game, and that was at Miami. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's once you get into the waters of the one through five. I mean, you can argue that you know, yeah, we had a chance to beat Miami. Uh, Virginia kind of handled us at Virginia, but we had a chance to beat them at home. But like Pitt kind of handled us, Duke handled us clemson handled us they're the three seeds so um at some point we're gonna have to go in there we're gonna have to <laughs> yeah, face our demons right do yeah. something that you know they're, they're on done. each row yeah so. um all right well what's what's the game plan joe do you are we, um well i promise you jude is not gonna be afraid so oh i know that i know that so this game's on wednesday at noon at which noon. is it's like a terrible time uh, for me, but I will DVR, but usually I get to finagle something into these things. So as far as being at work and all that, but, um, and obviously this goes every day. So we'll try to get back here when we can. Joe, you got a, uh, you got a prediction for the upcoming game against Wake Forest again. Yeah. Um, seeing how this went and seeing how 
Wake Forest has kind of got their hands tied. I mean, I'm not. I, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. I think it's probably going to be a little bit closer. Um, we could have probably scored some more points. So. Oh yeah, that was the one thing. You play you defense know, like that, though, and you don't have to. I mean, yeah, but I think what what you said before, like it seemed like we had the game, like the game was. Like we had a bigger lead than what we are, you know what I mean? Like it didn't look like the score was it was the score looked closer than what the game was, like you said. And so I think what it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a similar score, but it's just gonna be a closer game. So I'm gonna go Syracuse seventy five and um Wake Forest sixty eight. Um Yeah, I think that they'll do a little bit better, they'll learn a little bit, but um I don't know what they're going to have to do to stop Jesse. And I just think that that's going to open up, you know, better shots for Joe, better shots for Chris Bell, stuff like that. Um, And, you know, we just played them. So they should have the confidence to know that they're going to win. Confidence isn't a problem for me. It's just, you know, you don't really ever know what the home crowd is going to do. And it's in Greensboro, which is not that far away from where Winston-Salem is for Wake Forest. That's where most of these teams are. That's why. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, being down here in North Carolina, like I know that, that um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Syracuse fans down here, people from central New York and stuff like that. So then we're going to have people, we're going to have people there too. We're going to have a crowd there as well. So, um, but, you know, you know, all those Greensboro comments that Coach Beheim had back in the day, like, you just never really know, man. It's the ACC yeah, tournament. It's always, we haven't been great. You know, how many years have we played it before we got to win? Like, it's what was it? There's no value in Greensboro, something like that. I don't want to go relive that, but <laughs> he did say something, right? So, like I said, I have confidence in that game. Um, it's just from there on out. Like, I just it would well, be great to see a run. It'd be great to see a run, but it stinks because at the same time, we know that they have to like you have to have you have to have probably pit beat duke and then i guess play pit for for that side i mean we, whatever happens on the other side doesn't really matter right but the way i look at it is this right like we just shot really bad again duke has good defense you know we shot really good or really bad against duke, uh, duke but duke who usually isn't a great three point shooter they shot really really well for us um Pittsburgh, I feel like, is just built to beat us. And as <laughs> sad as that sounds, um, it's also very, very difficult to beat a team three times in a season. It's so. true, but Duke did it pretty easily last year to us. So we said the same thing. UConn did it to us the year we won the championship in 2003. So, I mean, it's, it's tough one way or another. You know, I want to see a run. Um, but one game, winning one game at home against Wake Forest, um, it hasn't really got me there. It's got me to the point where I'm confident on Wednesday, but after that, I'm going to be nothing but anxious and nervous. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I think, I think Syracuse can win this game. I'm not sure if it's a great matchup for Wake Forest, but also, I haven't watched a ton of Wake Forest this year either but and wasn't it no. was it an anomaly are they going to be able to what what joe well i'm just saying that even if you did you would have saw them as a team fully like with everybody on the roster with the roles figured out right you know and yeah. that's when with Monsanto going down that's what really hurt them so they're still trying to figure it out yeah um i think they're going to do better with jesse but i just feel like i just feel like they i mean obviously they they tried some things to stop him, and nothing worked. So, yeah, I don't, but they weren't doubling him like other teams did. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, look for that then, obviously. But no, Nadal, he will not be back. Who? Monsanto. Nadal's asking. Oh about yeah, it. no. The shooter they're no. missing is going to be back. You know, he tore his patella tendon. He's just, he's done. He's out. He was out for the season. So yeah, it's going to be it. Um, I what, still what think what you saw the other day is what what they're what we're gonna get. <laughs> all right, <laughs> <laughs> the green room. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think um, I think Syracuse can win. I think they're gonna do better. I think it's gonna be 
lower scoring. If Syracuse can, they they know what to do on defense. Um, they did it, and they did a pretty damn good job. If they play de- play defense like that again, I think we're gonna deal with maybe a little bit lower of a score. But um, I'm gonna say. 70, I didn't have this written down. You went in my range a little bit. 70 to 66, Syracuse. And we'll see what happens. Podcast Wednesday night. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I'll have to see. I live day to day on these things. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, never know. We could just do... Kind of a shortened version, just to just go live and just talk about it, you know? Yeah, maybe. Good. I mean, realistically, what do we do? I mean, do we, if we lose, is there any, is there any, you know, reason to just rush to it? Do we have to do it on Wednesday? You know what no, I mean? Like, no, yeah. But if exactly. we win, you'd like to, you know? Yeah. You're less likely to push it off. That's for damn sure. Um, right. right, right, exactly. And I mean, it's well, what are your what are your plans? Like, I don't know. My, I don't watch? know what my plans are. I'm going to be at work. Did you take the day off? I'm still contemplating on whether or not. Uh, oh, I I can't. I can't do that. So why? Because I, I can't put in this quickly for a day off. What if you wake up and you got a little COVID scratch? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't do that no. because I've always been. No, no. I have to be at was... work. I will most likely be able to watch this. Well, I mean, I've done it. I've worked in my office and watched games on my phone before, so I have that option. Fair. Okay. Fair. I don't uh, have that option. But oh, you don't. No. I gotcha. Okay. So that's why. So you're calling out. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I've already talked to my boss. He like we're it's a little bit different where I work. So it's a situation where there's rules, but it kind of depends on who you work for and you know. Yeah, right. I mean, if I wanted to, you know, work a half day from home and then get the second half off, you know. I've already basically told him that you know, I'm going to take my birthday off, but I don't know if I'm going to work a half day or not. So, but I will definitely be, my dad's taking a half day as well. So my plan is to either go to work for half a day, work from home half a day or not work at all. But I am going to be at my father's house watching this game when it's going on. So congratulations. Thanks, man. Oh, good for you. (laughs) Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Why noon? You know, seriously. You know, I don't know. If we win, then we play noon the next day. So, noonin, noonin. I mean, so even even now, it's one of those things where it's like I, I let them know like that next week was going to be difficult and everything. So like, it's I've told him he knows he's he's been my boss for a little while. He knows that when it gets around my birthday in March and the tournaments and even NCA tournament. I mean. Next Thursday and next the, the, the Thursday and Friday when the NCAA starts, I just randomly have a uh, dentist appointment and a doctor's appointment on Wednesday or Thursday and Friday of those days. Yeah, you can plan. So that. you can plan that too. You know, you could just take those days off. No, nah, I just look. I took them off, but I might as well like, you know, just don't take it off for the game. Like you know, go get your physical and you know, go get your teeth clean and then you're good. Michael says so. 76 to 70. Syracuse. Okay. That was close to what I had, right? 75, 68, something Would like that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm close to saying that, you know, I might as well just take my birthday off and then, you know, maybe just work a half day from home on Thursday. I don't know. Still trying to figure it out. I'm kind of confident that. I mean, I have good confidence. Does anyone does anyone care about Joe's work schedule right now? Still, I did care in the beginning. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> I did I care in the you're beginning. Just calling that out because you're just you're hating right now. No, it's not what's going on. Like, I, just, on. I just can't do that. I so. just. 
<laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I just, I know, I get it. We get it. We all get it. Uh, all right. I think that's going to do it for us here today. Go Qs. See what they can do in this tournament. Let's do it. My gosh. Do it. Do something. That would be awesome do to something. see. Get past the second <laughs> round for crying out loud. All right. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. See ya next time. Peace.